Hi guys, C-Man here again. Uh, today we're going to go over level bombing in practice. Uh, this is a video of a typical run with Lancasters in the main arena. And I'm basically just going to go through this video and, and narrate this and essentially show you what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, how I'm doing it, etc. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with, with level bombing in Aces High, I advise you check out my, uh, my other video, Level Bombing in Aces High. That goes over the process of bombsite calibration, some basic tips for, for level bombing. Um, if you're unfamiliar with bombing or, or you're just getting started, that's a great place to start. But if you feel like you've already covered that, you know what you're doing with that. Um, I think this might be uh, useful just as, as a way to see how I put this into practice. Okay, so here we are. We're just uh, we're on climb out. We just took off. Uh, as you can see, we've got a set of Lancasters. We're headed for A76, which is a small night airfield. Uh, we're just climbing out again. We're in Lancasters. We're loaded up with uh, 14 1,000 pound bombs. This is uh, this is generally a good all-purpose load, I find. Um, it's plenty of ordnance. It's more than enough to completely drop a drop an airfield. And it still gives you uh, some words left for incidental targets, towns, uh, GVs, whatever may be the case. Um, as you can see here, we're just climbing out. We're climbing through uh, 2,200 feet. We're just in the uh, autopilot climb mode here. Uh, looks like we're wept up at the moment. And we're just checking the map here. What I'm doing is basically I'm going south until I'm uh, due east of A76. And right now I'm actually checking 76 to see what's up. We can see the field is fully up right now. I'm just, again, planning my targets, planning the runs, um, just checking to see what's up on the, on the field so I know what's going on. Here we're lined up uh, east-west right on that sector line, so I'm turning due west. This will line us up on that airfield. And uh, once we level out here, we'll start taking a look at exactly how I'm going to line up the, the initial bomb run. Um, I'm going to probably cut parts of this video out so that we're not spending huge amounts of time flying randomly over water. So for now, I think I will cut here and we'll rejoin later. Okay, we're back, and we've just reached about 8,000 feet. It uh, looks like that's going to be our altitude here for this initial run. You can see I'm just engaging the level mode autopilot, throttling back, opening those bomb doors again, trying to get everything stabilized ahead of time. Throttling back to boost 4, which is my normal power setting in the Lancaster. You can see I'm going into the bomb site here. I'm not calibrating just yet. I'm just keeping an eye on my altitude and my oh, speed. Uh, and, uh, I want uh, my altitude to settle out around 8,000 feet uh, or close to that. Hey, I, uh, what I'm really watching for is for it to stop changing. And then my speed, I'm waiting for that to get just a hair over uh, 200 knots. I don't want to be too terribly slow over the target. So we're good here. Uh, our altitude is still changing I'll a little bit, but not enough to matter. And my speed is above 200 knots, so I'll be uh, reasonably quick going over the target. Uh, 200 indicated at 8,000 feet is about 260, 270 over the ground. So our calibration is done here. You can see we've got our altitude within, right now, uh, well, let's see, right now it's within three feet, and that uh, that's actually settling in a little bit closer, Powerful so this is guy. a really good calibration. Um, again, I'm working that yeah. throttle, uh, trying to hold my calibrated speed of about 203 in this case. You can see now we've got our speed dead on the altitudes within a foot, so this is a very good calibration indeed. Um, we're just heading in over the target. We can yeah, just see the here. town here. Uh, lots that. of chatter going on in the background. This is a uh, an active base take. If so now, if that becomes an annoyance, I may end up turning the volume down on that, but I'm going to try and leave it up here. I missed the VH. Okay, and you can just hear there, we're getting some good feedback. That's actually uh, Big yeah, Pat, my squad CEO, is uh, advising me that he has he missed the VH. So that means it's going to be my responsibility to take it out. Um, that is, as I mentioned, generally the most important target on these small airfields. So that is what I was lining up on ahead of time. You can see we're approaching this base from due east. So we're actually going to get that VH. And it looks like we can probably take that fighter hangar that's just beyond it. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of a turn in the bomb site associated with hitting that target, but it's uh, it's not very off, very far off our initial course Back here. Strip, so that shouldn't be a big act. deal. And again, I would like to emphasize the important of importance of communication here and just keeping that keeping that information going uh, between me and the other people in my squad and the other people involved in this base take um, advising on target hits target misses that way everyone knows what's going on and that way i know that i do need to line up on and take out this vehicle hangar 
you can see we're getting close here. Our drop parameters are very, very good indeed. Our altitude's only off by one foot. The speed's dead on. Again, I'm salvo two here at 1,000 pounds, so I'm dropping a total of 6,000 pounds on the hangar. And you can see right there, we trigger our bombs right at the forward edge of the hangar, and as soon as I'm bombs out, I'm swinging. Looks like I'm going to swing over to the right here and get this fighter hangar that's on the westernmost side of the field. Oh. Uh, yes, sir, we're going to get blue that one. We just clipped the black. edge there, but with six with splash blue damage black, from 6,000 pounds black, of bombs, that'll black. be more than enough to take that hangar. And now we're here, we're switching back to the calibration mode again. I blue use black, this as my black, battle damage assessment. You can see there we killed the vehicle hangar, so that's one. Now let's look and see how we did on this fighter hangar here. And there we go, fighter hangar is down. So that's two for two on our first pass. That's very good indeed. And uh, unfortunately, the Fraps did not record my voice here, but I've already informed everyone in the area that the vehicle hangar is, in fact, down, keeping up that good communication. Now, I'm pulling up the map. I'm planning my second run in here, um, trying to keep my situational awareness of being aware of what's going on around me. But planning that second run is actually going to be more important. Now on the way in, what I was doing is I actually looked and saw the lineup on those other two fighter hangars. I'm going to need to be on a northeasterly course. So I'm actually turning to the right here. I'm turning towards the north. I'm going to I'm going to come out of here about north. Uh, I guess due north is probably where I'm going to come out. And uh, I'm doing this as a first turn so that when I turn back in on the airfield, like town, essentially pop. I'll be turning in such a way that I've got the other two fighter hangars lined up. Now again, we want to we want to cruise about halfway outside the dar ring. Here I'm going outside the aircraft, just looking around. Uh oh, we're getting shot at here. That's that's never good. So we're going to return some fire. We got some hits on him. Uh, looks like we may have clipped a wing. Oh, he collided with us. Okay. So he collided with us. He took a half chunk of his wing off, and that's a uh, that's one more 109 out of this world, and that's never a bad thing. One town echo. So we're just watching him to make sure that he goes down, that he's not going to be a factor. Uh, again, I'm falling away from the airfield at this point, just building some distance to turn back in. So there's not really a whole lot to worry about right now with respect to the aircraft's uh, calibration. So I'm spending time keeping my situational awareness up, being aware of what's going around, going on around me, listening to comms, communicating with, uh, with my squad mates. You can see we're getting close to about midway out of the dar ring here. We should start our turn back in on the airfield soon. Yep, and there we go. We're autopilot off, combat trim on. Now you'll notice this is a 30 degree bank turn, and if you pay attention to the vertical speed indicator, we're keeping this very, very near zero as much as we can. Again, we want to keep all of these turns 30 degrees of bank, and we want to make them as level as possible. That's going to minimize the amount of corrections that the autopilot has to do. And in minimizing those corrections, that's going to get us a better calibration faster. Now you can see I'm actually fairly close to the airfield here, and already I'm looking. I'm looking at the lineup on those two fighter hangars, realizing that if I keep turning, I'm going to I'm going to end up too far off to the right. So we're just going to cruise out a little bit here, and I'm looking to turn in in such a way that when I roll out on that airfield, those two fighter hangars are lined up one one right after the other. Again, it's we want to try and take multiple passes on e on each target, and then these two fighter hangars are the other two high priority targets left on this field. So I want to make sure I get those as soon as possible. You can see how long it takes me between drops. Where do the so I want to minimize the number hand? of passes I have to make as much as possible. We're just coming up on the field here again, 30 degrees of bank, trying to hold that level. Uh, descent rate got a little bit out of control there, but it's nothing unmanageable. So now we're into the bomb site. You can see the altitude is rapidly changing as the autopilot's compensating. I'm waiting on that to settle down. It finally does. And again, I'm recalibrating. Every time you turn, you have to recalibrate because of the wind. Okay, there we're out of the calibration. We're pretty good there. We're off by three feet in altitude, four feet. It's drifting a little bit. And I'm pulling throttle here just to try and reach and maintain that 221 knots 200, of calibrated speed. Looks like we're finally settling in with our speed dead on at 221. Uh, oh, down to 220 there, but I'll throttle up to compensate for that. Down. And you can see that I'm five feet high on my drop. And now they're asking me to put the rest of my oh, bombs on town once the fighter hangers are down. And I'm communicating that to the affirmative. Bombs. Didn't kill him nothing. Now you can see we're coming in on our first fighter hangar here, and I don't quite have these lined up. There we go, bombs out on one, and now we're going to do that little bomb sight swing to get the second. I am throttling up just a little bit when I do that swing to compensate for the extra drag. And you can see this 
These are both going to be very good drops. Uh, looks like somebody missed their targets there. I'm not sure what that was about. Um, in this case, you can see we've got these uh, fighter hangers are one dead. Actually, that's the second we've killed now. Now let's see what happens with this third. There we go, we're three fighter hangers down, we're four for four on our targets at this point. We have fighters and vehicles completely disabled on this airfield. Uh, that's a fairly crippling blow, and uh, that's been communicated on comms as well. Uh, I think the plan originally was to put my orts on town. And you can see here I'm changing my salvo settings. Um, I don't remember at this point if I'm going for town or what I was doing at the time. But I'm, I'm not hangar dropping anymore, so now I want to be dropping these bombs individually. For town killing and things like that, you're going to have so much splash damage that there's really... There's no huge need to drop okay, multiple no. salvos of bombs. I, I much prefer to trigger them one at a time. And you can see we're just looking around again, keeping that situational awareness up. Keeping an eye on this typhoon, making sure he's not coming after us. Um, there's not a whole lot of opportunity to do this when you're down in the bomb site. It's more important that you make a good drop. That is, after all, the reason you're here. And there we go. I'm halfway out of the dar ring, so now I'm back out of autopilot here. We're making a 30-degree bank left turn, trying to keep that nice and level. Uh, I'm trying to remember what I was turning in on at this point. Uh, I don't remember if I was going into Kill Town. I think I ended up uh, trying to take out an Ord bunker, but that may have been a last-second retasking. We'll see here. Hey, can anybody up, uh, something, uh, that can take boards out at, uh, 76, please? And there you hear it. Uh, that was, in fact, the last minute retasking. Now, suddenly I've been retasked on Ord Bunkers. I'm taking a look out my window here, and I notice that I've got them neatly yeah, lined up. So I go ahead and let Big Pat know that I can take out the, uh, the Ord Bunkers here as well. Uh, our lineup isn't too terribly far off from town. Ah, just short! Unfortunately, this is going to put us in a little bit close to the airfield. It's going to be difficult to get this bombs. lined up exactly the way I more want it to. Town, um, but let's think. see what the what the results of this are here. Got a couple guns up in town now you can well. see we're down in the bomb site. The lineup is not as good as I wanted it to be. Again, I'm recalibrating because I've turned, so now I've got to adjust for the fact that the wind's coming from a different direction. Uh, our calibration is not very good here. Um, Oh, okay, there we go. I just got shot at by somebody. And now we're drifting off course and we're losing altitude. My calibration has gone to crap here. And you'll notice I'm very close to this Ord Bunker. There's no chance in heck that I can recalibrate the aircraft in time to hit this. So we're going to have to resort to some slightly unconventional targets. I went ahead and dropped some bombs because I had plenty of bombs. And... Uh, uh oh, you can see here we're, our engines up. are completely dead. We're getting time. shot at by a Spitfire of some type. Hey, Couldn't read the tag there. But he's off of me now, but Going we've completely the missed the yard bunkers. I'm positive of that. I, I dropped some random bombs just in with almost no calibration at all, and you can see I was dreadfully short there because I didn't realize my engines were off. So the aircraft was going much slower, so I came up short. So now it's time for some unconventional tactics. We're going for the... Uh, this is called the Lank Stuka. Well, uh, this is basically using a Lancaster as a dive bomber. Like and I was actually nicely lined up for a dive bombing pass on that ore bunker, but yep, as you saw there, the somebody else got it before okay. I could get to it. So at this point, the aircraft is dead. I've got very little lords left. Uh, there's nothing left of consequence on the base to hit, so I'm just going to go drop my bombs on town. And we're going to see what happens here. Probably won't even get much in the way of town burnings again. I'm just I'm eyeballing this. I'm dive bombing town. And all of our ores are gone. You can see I have zero bombs left, so now it's time to get the hell out of Dodge. Um, at this point, this is the first time that things have calmed down enough for me to figure out what's going on with the uh, the engines. Um, there's no damage indicated here. I just pulled up my damage indicator there. And for whatever reason, when my first uh, drone got shot down, it turned my engines off. Uh, I don't know if I hit the button accidentally or, or what happened there. But we're back up to having four Always engines play. on, and uh, it looks like we might actually it. make it home. Uh, we're missing a right rudder, a left flap, and a right flap, so this is going to be a no flap yeah, landing. But way, other right. than that, right, this should be a manageable it. amount of damage, and that's a successful bombing run. Get a low uh, A20. Coming off the runway.
So once again, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoy uh, having the opportunity to see some of the things we've discussed in level bombing actually in practice in the main arena. And I hope it gives you a, a slightly better understanding of exactly some of the things that I was talking about and some of the methods that I used and how they work in, in practice. Again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave comments on this video. Or if you see me in-game, I play under the name Seaman, as seen on the screen, only without the dash. Uh, feel free to hit me up anytime. Now I am in the very near future going to be doing a, a specially requested video, and that's level bombing against carrier groups, against CVs. So be sure to keep your eyes peeled for that. That should be up here soon.